Okay, Cyber here. I just want to go through how I'll do a quick um, research on one requirement. It may take you guys a few hours, but pretty simple how I would do it. So, if we start with the requirement to to one, it talks about using one primary function to prevent function that require different security level from coexisting. So if you have a server and it shall have one function in there, uh, that only one function should be in that one server. Everything else needs to be disabled. You guys can read the rest of the testing procedure over here and a little bit on the guidelines. So I have Notion where 221, I reword it to where only one primary function per system to prevent different security levels from coexisting. I listed some web page here. The way I'll do is explain the requirement, explain the deliverable, and ex the reason why behind the requirement of this single one sub requirement. So, what I did was I literally just Google one primary function per server. And of course, PCI pop up because is, is there kind of lingo to it? I went ahead and clicked a couple of these websites that seem interesting. Things that did not match what I was looking for, I literally didn't, didn't look at it. So, really cool thing is I found this one on LinkedIn on that Google search. And it talks about PCI compliance and containers. So, if you guys don't know what containers are, you can always Google search it and it will tell you what containers are but I'll go through a little bit brief of that so it talks about PCI 3.2 version 3.2 doesn't address containerized but they do address containerized and and one their files uh, 64 so they do address address it in the cloud computing let's go back to 64 oh actually I'll show you how I got there so this here talks about hey maybe containerized maybe a better way to isolate the one single function per server or per virtualized or one server however you want to think about it uh, he talks about it a little bit here. How can you isolate it through logic, which is like containers. The second one talks about uh, physical isol isolations. And then you guys can read more about this. And then he leaves some of his reference down here, which is um, pretty cool because that's how I got the other links. So... This is another one that I found on just Googling and Complier. It talks about Docker, which is containers, um, how it works, how it works, and why it should be used. Uh, talks a little bit about here, which is cool. Um, got a little research on that. This here is Calcom. They talk about PCI requirements. Same thing as requirement 2.2 the CIS the CIS here the, the NIST the ISO and the SANS so those are all resources that you can look at to make sure you can fully understand each individual framework and then it states a little bit about the requirement 2.2 here and then talks about a little bit of talks a little bit about hardening a little bit so it talks a little about hardening here downtime and testing why you should implement hardening for each sir um, each uh, server that you have there's benefits 
that they talk about and the requirement that it hits for PCI. So, uh, pretty decent document here. Let's go over the next one. This one here talks about its container journals. So, they're talking about 10 easy steps to ensure PCI and how they do that. They would do it by this here it will be the containers setup, um, containerized dockers that um, any other access that is going through like this one here it will be blocked. The only way in is going through the non-CDE and that will go through your CDE environment here. A couple of the systems that can access the CDE will be that one. And these are some of the requirements for uh, hardening the uh, Docker um, that can can help prevent uh, hackers from attacking. So one one service per server or data set. Cool document there. Now this one talks about Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes is actually, they talk about how it originated from using original hardware. Then they use hypervisor, which is virtual machines. And this is a setup for containers. Uh, each container will have its own, um, its own server, which does one specific thing. And that is using whatever hardware it is that um, that you have to be able to run these different containers versus hypervisor will split your, uh, your hardware into these individual so your operating system will be split into this one and this one so if you have 8 gigs of RAM you split 4 and 4 Plus your operating system here still so has needs RAM too. Docker on the hand is a little bit different. Talks a little about how it works and what you can and cannot do. Let's go to the next one. This here talk about Kubernetes. The way is controlled through the cloud um, and the design, the infrastructure of it. Everything is on a node and you have one central control which is your API um, and that controls all your that controls all your different services within this cloud provider and that's what it really talks about within this one you can read more about it by googling what a node is how does it communicate what's the interface time so so forth and the last thing will be this document here, which it was April 2018, the cloud service provider or cloud computing guidelines. I scroll through and trying to figure how does containerize work. So I look at the table top, a table of contents. I look at segmentations. Um, nothing else in here that spark my interest uh, risk management spark my interest a little bit and nothing about here it wasn't until I got to here where they start talking about hypervisor and containerized containers so I went ahead and hopped to that page this here is where PCI talks about hypervisor and how you should maintain your uh, VMs, your virtual machines. And here's where, where the container is. And these are things that how you go and contain, um, maintain compliance with containers. After you guys have read all that, um, you can go to your documents, how you want to save your documents 
you then you will just literally explain the requirement to that single one and what is the deliverables what do you have to do to deliver to pass compliance in this case it has to be one service per one server and the reason why behind it is to um, to limit vulnerabilities of having two server uh, two different applications running in one server so you run NTP and then you also run something else you can patch both of them but one is going to be going to give it a weaker vulnerability where uh, attacker can exploit that get into the server and then get into the car holder data so that's the reason why but to look above that why you know what does that really hurt um, the company in in return the reputation um, credit leaks I mean data leak you know so so forth so this is how I will do my research on this single one requirement 221 hopefully this helps you guys out you guys got any questions the slack group in there can help out anyone in the advanced group to the general group that's been studying this specific one can help you guys out